I'm going to create a new class and call it prefix evaluator. And inside here, I'm going to start off with a main method. All right, so we're going to uh, write our test code first, and we're going to evaluate the exact same expression that I had shown you before, which is this one right here. So I'm actually going to cut and paste this. So let me copy it and go back to my code here and just write in here that that's the value, that's the expression that we are trying to evaluate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a small piece of test code here, and that pretty much is going to be all I need for my test code. I'm gonna just write the Go code header for now. And that's going to be the dummy for our uh, main execution method. And we, we need to talk a little bit about what we need to do in this execution method, if there are any other methods that we're going to need. And uh, I would like you to take a minute now and talk to your partner about what utility methods might this Go method need in order to help it do its thing. As a reminder, once again, this uh, page describes briefly some of the tools that we needed in order to process the string. I'm gonna give you a hint, we need two helper methods. Okay, so we're gonna to need to add a split method. I, I, I definitely agree with that, sir. And um, where do you think would be a good place to do that? I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put that right in here. But since you mentioned it, uh, we're not really on this right now, but since you mentioned it, let's just do that, okay? So you can see what is gonna be the delimiter, Mr. Marriott, for our expression. It's going to be a space. So let's do what Mr. Marriott suggested and create a string array of tokens. And we're going to take this expression and we're going to split it using the space as a delimiter. While we're at it, this wasn't really the sequence I wanted, but I'm going to follow your lead. What else are we going to need inside our main workhorse method that is shown on this page right here? We're going to need a stack. Help me create a stack. Okay, so we have ourselves a stack that we're going to need. And then we're probably going to need some sort of loop in here. Uh, I'm going to just comment this out for now, but we're going to need some sort of loop. And we're going to need to do some processing. And then when we're all finished with the processing, where is the answer going to finally end up here? It'll end up at the bottom of this stack. So the last thing we're going to end up having to do is we're going to pop the last element and print it so that the user can see what the final result was. Now, we still haven't talked about what's happening in this for loop, and we're going to get back to that. But I want to get back to my question that I had before about what should we have in terms of uh, uh, helper methods. Okay, so let's create a method called, um, what should we call it? I called it is operator. So we'll go public boolean is operator and this thing is going to take a string i called it item but you can call it something else if you want and this thing is going to try to figure out if the a string item that i'm giving it is an operator or an operand what am i working with so far strings what do i really need do the math right uh, we could make a decimal but i'll keep it easy for today and we'll just assume that the answers will come out integer just to make it a little bit easier and I'm going to call this an eval method. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to need to pass some things to this eval method. Let's go back to our uh, is operator situation right here. And what we want to know is, is this string the same as one of these strings? And I'll keep this easy for today. These are the only operators we're concerned with. Plus, minus, multiplication, and division. Those are the only ones we're interested in. So what I want to know is, does this item match one of these? And your first thought is going to be to use a bunch of if-else statements. And that is a perfectly reasonable CSA solution, but we're not in CSA. We want to write our code flexibly. We want it to be able to grow easily. If we add or delete operators in the future, we want to be able to do it simply. How can we tell if this item is part of this collection? Let's use a set. For what type of set are we going to have? And what would be a good name for this set, sir? What does it contain? I'm going to call it operators or ops. You can call it operators if you want. And I'm going to say new. Now, do we care about the order of the set? Does it matter? No. So we'll just use a hash set. And this will allow me to define everything 
all on one line. And that is my hash set. And the next thing I'm going to do is I want to know if this item is in this collection. I could use an if statement or I could do a simple return. Now look what happens if I have to add or delete one of the operators. I just go in here and change the data and I don't have to change the code. Now you might be disturbed by the fact that I need to recreate this set every time I run this method. And if you prefer, you can pull this out of here and make it a static in your class and do it that way instead. But I'm gonna avoid that extra complication. I'm just gonna leave it in here and say it's not too bad. You understand what I'm saying though? I could pull this out of here and put it up here as a static in the class. I could do that also. So we're almost finished, believe it or not. We are probably about uh, half done. And now all we have to do is write our eval method and our go method and we're finished. So now I'm going to ask you to take a few minutes and write this eval method. I'm going to get you started though. The first one is going to be int left is equal to, how do I take the string left? Oops, I should call it something else. Uh, let me call it uh, left int like that. How do I take the string left and convert it into an integer left? And I'm going to do the same thing for the right. And finally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a switch statement. And that is going to be the entirety of my code. I'm going to ask you to work with your partner and build out this switch statement right now. I'll give you one last hint. And we have to try to figure out now what should go inside this if statement. I'll give you a hint. It's going to perform the appropriate operation, evaluate it, and return the result. That's what each branch of the switch statement should do. I put a little hint on the board if you're stuck. Mr. Alejandro, sir, what should I return if it's a plus operator? Okay, now you finish this switch statement with the other cases. Hopefully you've come to the conclusion that your switch statement looks something like this. Should we put a default in our switch statement? So if I reach the default, they've obviously added an operator that they forgot to add into my case switch statement. So I'm going to warn about that. And I'll just return some safe value here. You can also throw an exception here. That will be a very good thing to do. I'm just not going to add that complication today. So our little evaluation of prefix is coming along quite nicely. The only thing we have left to do now is our actual workhorse go method. And for here, what I need to do is refer back to my algorithm here and say, we're going to parse the expression from right to left. And we're going to keep checking to see if it's an operator or an operand. What are we going to do if it's an operator? What are we going to do if it's an operand? So I'm going to set up the loop for you. And then I want you to finish off the if statement. So let's go over here now and make this live code. And I'm going to set up the loop. I'm going to say for int, oops, int i equals, and I'm going to say tokens dot length minus one. Remember, we're parsing backwards now. I is greater than or equal to zero minus minus I. And that will give us a backward parse. And then I'm going to say, if something, then do something. Otherwise, do something else. And what I need you to figure out now is what goes over here, what goes over here, and what goes over there. If you're feeling lucky, go right ahead and run this whole thing and see if you can get the final answer of 17 that we're expecting. Keep in mind that the stack holds strings. So, uh, okay, very good, sir. I'm going to move on to someone else. So um, if it is a, a token, sorry, if it is an operator, what action should we take if it's an operator? We're going to evaluate. We, we need to evaluate some stuff here. And this thing needs uh, three different um, parameters to call. Uh, what did I call this? I think I called this uh, eval, sorry, eval. And uh, I need to put some parameters in here. And then uh, it's going to give me some answer. And it's going to give it to me as a integer. But I need to push it onto the stack. And so I need to turn it back into a string. OK, so that'll turn it back into a string. And then I'll save this somewhere. Uh, like this, and then what will I do after that, sir? I'm going to push that back into the stack, 
And uh, you know what? Let me call it result. I think that's a better uh, term for it. And now all I have to do is figure out how to create the parameters. Uh, we were, I think we were on you, Mr. F. Sorry, go ahead. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put in here, okay, like that. All right. So we're going to leave it like that. And uh, what are we going to do if it's not a operator? What should we do in that case? That must mean it's an operand. Miss Olivia, what should we do here? Like that. All right. So let's uh, let's try this out. And you can see we got the right answer of 17. 